definitely beat. Oh, he's running into it. Oh, oh, nice timing. He what is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas. You know, my name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 on the beautiful and classical map Forts of Eisen. This game was played in the World Championship 2022 between the yellow Rohan player Dunadine and his opponent, the blue Isengard player Exitado, who is opening with a furnace and a Uruk pit and building up the Slammer Mill around this spot. So it's a very good matchup. One of my, you know, I have two favorite matchups in BFME 1, and that's one of them. The other one is Gondor against Isengard. And also important to mention is the fact that Isengard player is the on host player in this one. But it's a beautiful matchup. I like that one. So the Rohan player is sending his Hobbit in one peasant, actually both the peasants from the bottom side, but one of them is being hidden at the bottom left corner, which Isengard player can't see. And he will be building a slaughterhouse here, which is a bad and a good thing at the same time. The slaughterhouse is tankier than a lumbering mill, so it's harder to be destroyed, but you sacrifice the wood bonus you might eventually get, because if you have at least two lumbering mills, you get 10% discount, which makes your buildings way cheaper. And in the meantime, Rohan player will be recruiting extra peasants. He will be recruiting in total four extra peasants. That's like the early power of the Rohan faction, which gives you the chance to dominate every single faction, every single matchup on every single, match, uh, on every single map, with your peasant spam. And also the workers are being sent forward for scouting purposes, but what a worker can also do is to repair the building. And that's exactly what he's doing. You can see, destroying this is a bit harder, and also because you have no lumber mill, there are no workers to be killed. So it's actually not a bad idea at all by Rohan. And the early game achievement is definitely done, because as, you know, as Isengard or as Mordor against Rohan in the beginning of the game, you want to play a bit more defensively. You want to be the one who is protecting instead of the one who is attacking. And Hobbit can't make it to the lumber mill workers. He's trying to micro, but again, Isengard being on host will make this a bit more tough. And he will be able to cloak, that's pretty nice. In the meantime, we have a fight in the middle of the map between peasants and Uruks. Remember, Uruks are way stronger, but I think this Uruk was already participating in one of the fights. So two peasants can still beat one Uruk, but in a one-on-one -on -one situation, nothing in the game. No swordman can beat the Urukai. I mean, look, this guy is actually paying attention to everything. He was having a very good early game. Now he's grouping all the Uruks in the middle of the map, and I think he's going to war chant them. The plan is to split them after and creep. That's the plan. There comes the war chant. And he's gonna split them two by two, send two of them to this bottom left, and two of them in the middle. A very good looking base with three furnaces. Uruk pit is level two for the pikemen. And the first Rohirrim is coming to the middle area. Trampling is a bad thing because Uruks with the war chant are quite tanky. You cannot one shot them, and there is like a revenge damage. So if you trample into them, uh, you will receive a lot of damage in return. He was able to steal one part of the money, but the creep got secured by Isengard. So now he was wasting time and he won't be able to destroy this mill because pikemen are already on the field just in time. Okay, the hobbit is trying to run for his life. Run, Mary Rock Brandybok, run! Oh no, okay, the hobbit has been taken down, it's not the end of the world though. But you can see Isengard is playing it very nice. It's a risky trample. Don't lose him! I mean, again, the worst thing that can happen to you is to lose one of your Rohirrim, especially in this matchup early game. I mean, he's trying to contest the creep. I think he should be able to do that. And, you, you know, when you play Rohan against Isengard, your goal is to get to 3 power point ASAP. You need to be the one who is summoning the Albin Alliance, and this way you can kill the pikemen way easier. Even though it's way harder for Gondor to deal with the pikemen than it is for Rohan, because keep in mind that the pikemen are very vulnerable against swordmen. That also includes the peasants. That was, by the way, really close. He almost lost the full battalion of Rohirrim against the pikemen. Okay, with Lourdes on the field, I personally like that one, because the earlier you get Lourdes on the field, the easier and faster it will be to level him up to level 5. That's the power spike we are looking for, because with level 5 you unlock the leadership, which makes your units deal 60% more damage, and that's a lot. Again, peasants are countering the pikemen, but Rohan player, I mean Isengard player is paying attention to every single location, playing a very smooth and almost a perfect game without making mistakes. You have still a couple of creeps left on the map. This one is going to be eventually taken down. Oh, Lourdes, one more shot. Yeah, he did it. Oh my goodness. That's really bad though. He lost a full battalion. Again, 
this is not the end of the world. But he demolished this table and, you know, losing a Rohirrim will slow you down big time. And you don't want this to happen. Berzerka is a counter to, this, to the Rohan peasants. I mean, if you don't have a money advantage as Isengard against Rohan, which this Isengard player definitely has, then you can simply recruit Berserka. They are very good against peasants, they can one-shot them. But now we have the war pit coming up. And Rohan is kind of in a very, very bad spot. The armory with heavy armor purchased, uh, forge plates next. And I believe for the first time in this game, the slaughterhouse is going to be taken down. But you can see the slaughterhouse is also more tankiness against um, horses. So it's not only about the HP, but also about um, Seed. For example, this mill with level 2 has 3000 HP. This slaughterhouse has 3500 HP. But it's not only about the 500 HP difference. It's about the armor set too. You know, the slaughterhouse is being tankier against horses in compared to a lumber mill, which makes it more resistant. The map is looking amazing and phenomenal for Isengard, and Rohan is struggling. I mean, there is a very great micro with the pikemen Berserker combination, which makes it hard for the Rohirrim to approach, which makes it also hard for the peasants to approach. And with that being said, Isengard is able to take a lot of map control, which you normally can't in this matchup, because Rohan is a very good faction when it comes to have a map control advantage. Because, you know, early game you have the peasants, mid game you have Rohirrim, Rohirrim Archer combination, which makes it a bit harder in compared to other factions, uh, you know, for Isengard, by, in which you can just send pikemen to every single location. That's something you can't do against a good Rohan player, which Dunedain for sure is. Okay. I mean, he's microing with the peasants, with the pikemen, but you see the micro level is something else. With the Rohirrim, he was almost able to kill a full battalion of, of the pikemen, but luckily for Isengard player, he was paying attention. The war pit will be demolished, and I believe we will go... Yeah, look his money, dude. He's super rich in Saruman. The white wizard will be recruited from his tower, Orphank, very, very soon. The map control is looking amazing. Alvin Alliance has been special somewhere in the middle of the map. That's going to be kind of good for Rohan to reclaim some of the map control and kill, kill some of the pikemen. What Rohan needs is time. Time enough to get archer range to level 2, get fire upgrade purchased, and, you know, recruit some Rohirrim Archer and get map control. Make sure those new Uruks have and Lourdes is already level 5, by the way, boys. That's very, very good. Archers are killing pikemen, but Isengard is paying attention. He will... That scared me a little bit. <laughs> but there comes the White Wizard Saruman. Armory coming up next. And he was, you know, saving almost all his pikemen. And these are very important steps. When you want to improve your gameplay, you don't want to feed power points to your opponent because later on when you feed too many power points he will get AOD unlocked from his spell book which makes it very hard to win this matchup if they're up on the field now the king of Rohan bad trample into the pikemen but luckily Isengard was not paying attention he was not switching to the porcupine formation and when you are not in the formation you don't have the crazy revenge damage level 2 unlocked Saruman looking to fireball I believe but keep in mind, Fireball and Cripple can be both missed. So if the target is too far away, once you are able to cast your Fireball, it will go on cooldown. You will also see the animation coming through, but it won't reach out to the target. So you want to make sure that you can cancel it just in the last possible second. Oops, I think that was Theodine. Let me check. Um... Yes, sir. Theoden has been crippled and taken down by Lourdes. The peasants are again hard countering the pikemen, but the Rohirrim can't. There comes the carnage. Here has been used, but the Rohirrim will be able to retreat. That was actually a good thing for Rohan. I think it would be even better when he wouldn't waste his seal, but it's okay, because Isengard was wasting his carnage and also his war chant. I mean, Legolas is good. Uh, later on, when he's level 5, 6, he can easily kill Lourdes in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He can kill Lourdes before Lourdes can make it to him. But the combination of Saruman and Lourdes, level almost 6, is going to be definitely something Rohan has to be careful about. Armory, um, purchased, 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 Fire Arrow is missing. So with Fire Arrow, you will be able to make the transition into the combos. And then what you can do is you can make, you know, build the siege works and just go cra crash the enemy wall and go ham. At this point of the game, it's very hard for Rohan to fight against the um, Isengard heroes. 
So what you need to do is avoid fighting them, you know, avoid fighting them and try to be a bit more active in the minimap and try to gather power points. That's what you actually need. You know, he needs definitely the length and also Legolas can be good when it comes to level up. And Theoden is back in the business, that's good. That comes the King of Rohan. Steeple has been rebuilt and you can also sell the units by the way. Maybe he doesn't know, but you can sell them inside the Citadel. Okay. Rohan is kind of poor though, because again, he needs to invest 700 for each Rohirrim Archer Battalion. You have to give them heavy armor and, for, uh, and fire arrows, which by the way cost you 500 for fire, 250 for the heavy armor. There comes the Palantir, but I think Rohan can just simply turn around and fight this. I mean, there is no chance in which the war, there is no world in which the war Rider can kill the Rohirrim when Theoden is nearby, you know? And this Rohirrim is level 6, by the way. Okay. Legolas is being chunked, he is on cooldown, but I think Isengard is a bit overcommitting. He will be, you know, giving more experience to Legolas. Oh, that was close. One more hit. Will he be crippled? Yeah, he will be crippled. Ooh, oh, the Wombo Combo, boys. Lurts the fighting Urukai and his master, Saruman the White Wizard. Cripple them and fireball them. That's what you like to see. Theoden, by the way, is almost level 4. That's going to be a huge and very important power spike for Rohan. When we get to this point, everything is possible. Glorious Charge basically makes your Rohirrim immune to damage. They will get 75% increased armor, which can stack with the armor from Theoden. So they will have, you know, long story short, 125% armor. They will have in total 60% more damage. And most importantly, they will not slow down. But you can see, in the mid to late game, it's going to be harder for Isengard to keep map control against Rohan. Because, yeah, you can dodge the peasants with your pikemen as they are faster, but you cannot dodge and get away from the Rohirrim Archer. And with Fire Arrow, they can crush your pikemen in a few seconds. Oh, Therian, don't die! Okay, but he's killing pikemen, and most importantly, he's gathering power points left and right. Which is pretty good. And he has been doing a phenomenal job so far dodging this dude. He's running for his life, but I think... The works they shouldn't be able to catch up to him. I mean, it's way easier to micro a single unit in compared to a full battalion. Uh oh, be careful. Nice micro by Dunedain. Very well done. You see, he's beating the works to stay so he can finish off the full battalion. And there comes the Visa Plus, I think. Uh oh, Theorin might be in trouble, boys. He missed the Visa Plus. Look, he's shooting and also rotating with the pikemen at the same time. Theoden might be in trouble. He has to use heal. Very good micro there from Isengard. He almost was able to king, kill the king. And the Warchan was kind of questionable, but I think he didn't want he didn't want to lose more units to the Elven Alliance. Okay? And to be honest, even after a very rough early game, Rohan was still able to find his big, uh, way back into the game. So now he has a decent amount of map control, which he desperately needs. He also needs Aragorn and Irma. You, you know, when you... When you have the feeling that you need to go for the lead game, then you want to have Elma on your side. Fireball! Uh, you see? It was out of the target. So basically out of the range. So Fireball went off on cooldown, but it was not able to hit the target. It also is in the description, by the way. Can be missed if the target is out of the range. Okay. Three power points almost for Rohan, and we have ten power points for Isengard. So he can definitely go for... The rain, if he wants to, he has also the power points for the Tainted Land. But when you want to go for them, uh, Balrog, as soon as possible, then you want to skip the land and go for rain, and then right after, beautiful Hulk Strike, holy guacamole. And you can also trample the Uruk Pikeman common, no problem. They are not immune to be trampled, but in a melee fight, they can still crush your army. However, that's a level 2 row here with full upgrades and theory being around. And Glorious Charge is unlocked, ladies and gentlemen. They have a very strong and beefy army in the middle of the map from Isengard. Three combos, Lord's Leadership level 6 with Pillage, and also Saruman level 6. And now we will get the Barista upon the field and let this siege begin. Now the question is, can Rohan defend this? You see there is even a worker to scout. This guy is playing out of his mind. Very well played here from Isengard and also from Rohan. He went for the Tainted Land, also captured the outpost. There comes the beautiful Hawk Strike, and you can see, you know, you can do that with Legolas, you know, send him around, use Hawk Strike, get it on cooldown every single time. You can one shot the pikemen, no problem. Even with heavy armor, they don't have they don't have a chance. And Legolas might be a very important 
a tool later on, a hero that you might need when it comes to kill lords in Saruman. Okay, let the siege begin. Very strong army of Isengard. Rohan has the Alvin Wood. I'm, I'm assuming he's gonna go for a lame trample. Yoma is also on the field. That's gonna be a big fight, boys. There comes the glorious charge. Oh, he's gonna use the land right before the trample. He's gonna be able to steal them with the Warm Tongue. Lourdes is being chunked. Saruman is getting in safety. Immediately turning around. Lourdes, 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 Lourdes. Oh, he's gonna be able to cripple him and get out too. And that's gonna be the end of Legolas. There is no way he can survive that. But, oh, that's overkill <laughs> with the fireball, but it's okay. Um, but he lost the barista. It means the siege will be stopped, at least for now, which will give Rohan a bit more time to actually develop a strategy which he desperately needs. In the meantime, Isengard once again taking over the map. He doesn't stop. Again, map control is everything, and these players have been doing a phenomenal job in this game. We hear the Elven Horn. There is no Orcon, as Legolas would like to say. In the Pikemen, they will insta run away. Here, it's very important to not feed too many power points to your opponent. Again, Legolas has been killed, but luckily Theodin and also Eoma are still alive. And that's very important, especially Theodin is the most important and valuable hero. Rain is being active, it means leadership is gone, but it's gonna be available in about a minute from now. The Rain has 7 minutes cooldown, I mean 5 minutes 30 seconds cooldown, and the duration is 3 minutes. So there is 2 minutes 30 seconds window, <laughs> you know, when you play against Isengard, in which you will be able to regain your leadership. Okay, Saruman, almost level 8, there comes the fireball, beautiful fireball, almost killed the full battalion, very well done, very well done, this outpost is going to be taken down, rain is still active, you can see, I mean only one, one unit is glowing, so basically the way the rain works, it's affecting all the units your enemy has on the field right now, every unit that has been recruited, that has been recruited after you use the rain, your opponent will have leadership on them. It's affecting always the current army. There comes the end summon against the enemy combos. Beautiful trample. The problem is the pikemen in the front are immune. There is an explosive mine, by the way, okay? I mean, the ends couldn't achieve too much. He's trying to beat him on the land, in which the Isengard army won't have leadership. Um, but again, you cannot trample down the pikemen. The pikemen of the Uruk crossbowmen, Uruk pikemen, com I mean, the pikemen crossbowmen combo are immune to trample. Lourdes is leveling up to level 7. Every time he kills units when Lourdes is nearby, he will also make bank. And that goes down the last end for 105 resources to make Isengard even more rich. This was actually quite risky what Isengard was doing. The explosive mine was close to his army. There comes the will of Saruman for the heal, for the recovery. Which is a level 8 ability from Saruman in the patch 2.22. And Rohan is trying to fish power points. I mean, at this point, you want to make sure that you do something to keep Isengard away from your own fortress. And you need map control too. Because if you don't have map control against Isengard, the second he gets to Balrog, and there is only one target, in this case your castle, he has the chance to win the game. I think he missed the fireball, or he hit the fireball on one unit only. Don't lose the level 7, that's very important. And it looks like he will be barely able to get away. I mean, he killed a lot of Barista, and remember killing siege weapons in the patch 2.2 is way more rewarding than it was before in the previous patches. Legolas has been doing a phenomenal job in this game. Uh, with the Hawk Strike, he was able to gather so many power points. If you don't know what that is, that's like pretty much leadership for the Elven allies, Elven warriors around him. But again, you know, Elves are pretty good in the patch 2.2, however, you know, there is just too much support for the Cav. So Eoma, Theory and Glorious Charge, leadership. There is like much more room for the calf when you play the Rohan faction. Isengard is marching forward, boys. It's a very strong army, four combos, three ballista, maxed out leadership. And land is on cooldown. I mean, uh, ends are on cooldown. Land is available for both the players. But what, what Isengard can do is just stay on the own land for even more leadership. Land will also give you more armor. That's gonna be a big commitment. And I don't know if he can defend this. I have no clue. We will find out though. There comes the siege against the Geet. Three ballistas. They can do that quite fast. He's chunking the part of the ball very well. None. Oh, there comes the trample. He's gonna miss the ability. There comes the land. And Rohan is just trying to destroy the enemy 
Ballista, which he will be able to do. But you don't want to exchange your highly level Rohirrim for that. Looks like he will be also able to destroy that, but he's going to lose one of the Rohirrim. It's okay though. He killed four Ballista, only for one Rohirrim. The gate has been fireballed, and one more fireball is going to be enough to destroy this. So Rohan has to repair this gate, by the way. That's going to be very important. In the meantime, look, at this point of the game, I think Rohan player realizing, okay, I cannot fight against this army. There is no way. Rain is active. I have no leadership. I have no land. I cannot even approach it without my glorious charge. So what you need to try to do when you find yourself in a situation like that is avoid fighting the army and start trying to gather power points. Attack his bees, attack his units, attack stuff that you can kill and fight against and don't even bother trying to fight against this army. This army is just way too powerful. And by the way, fireball is almost available. Rohan wasn't repairing the gate and I believe one more fireball is going to be enough to destroy the gate. Is he gonna go for it? Let's see. Ah, he's going for it. Boom! Now, it's not a gate rush anymore. Even though gate rush is allowed, by the way, in the tournament, there is no rule for no gate rushing, but it's like a gentleman's agreement. Most people, they don't want to do that. So, we'll hear him write it down. There comes the war chant, and this army is definitely capable of destroying a full castle, not once, but even twice and three times. In the meantime, Rohan is taking care of the outpost. I mean, he won't be defeated, though, because he has still the outpost at the top right corner under his control. But losing a castle always hurts. Always hurts. And the problem is he has not that much money to recover from it. But luckily, he has a very strong army. And Elma is almost level 3, which also is pretty valuable in this patch, because the outlaw actually gives you a lot of money. For each kill on enemy units, you make bank, 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 bank. And that might be enough to eventually buy the castle back. Rain is not active anymore. There comes the Glorious Charge, Big Commitment, the Warp Pit is going to be the target of Rohan. The Int Elias will be Special Summon too. In the meantime, Isengard was able to destroy the castle. What a game this is, dude! And guys, again, I'm streaming most of the games in the World Championship on my Twitch channel. And uh, you can find the link for that in the description down below. I would like to have you there. The Ents are going to war. Isengard is coming. He want to finish off the game. Look, he sent the Vorks to the outpost. And he's sending his army to the bottom outpost. Boom! Fireball, boys. Beautiful. Very well done. So Rohan is going to split the army. He's going to lose the well. He's very close to EOD. But also... Oh, there comes the cripple on Elma. I think we should be trying to cripple Theodin. It would be way more valuable for Isengard, but it's okay. 20 power points. So we have the Baldrock available. And we have only one power point. We need only one power point for the, for the EOD. Oh, yeah. I mean, Rohirrim Archer are very big against Seed. Against... Oh, against Fire. There comes the... He's going to use the Will of Saruman to get heal on his Saruman and Lourdes. They are running for their lives, but you cannot outrun. Oh, there comes the big boy, the Balrog of Morgoth. In Saruman, it's being chunk, 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 chunk. Oh, AOD. Kill him. Can you kill him? I think you can. Maybe you can't. I don't know. He's running... EOD is gone, and Saruman was still alive. This output is going to be definitely taken down, but in the meantime, Rohan was able to defend this outpost, so he won't even be defeated if Baldrog, and once Baldrog destroys the outpost. Can you imagine, guys? Rohan has only the outpost, but Isengard is not much more wealthy and much more in a, you know, in a much better spot, because he lost the majority of his castle, including the Orphan, and he also lost a lot of map control to Rohan. At this point of the game, Oh, beautiful. By the way, Saruman didn't die. He put him inside the outpost. There comes the Vinx. He's trying to hunt them down. But uh, Rohan is trying to dodge. I mean, Rohan, uh, Balrog can't, you know, catch you. But he might be able to land on you. The Vork Riders are going to be sent forward. It's a mistake to fight against level 10, you, you know, Rohirrim Archer. Around the well, they will keep respawning over time. But what Isengard needs to do is to fight for the map control. Rohan is just getting too much value, too much money. Don't kill your own Rohirrim. Okay, there we go. This is the leader of the, you know, the wizard in Middle-earth has been taken down. Don't lose the level 10 unit. It's very important. He's trying to rebuy the outpost, trying to kind of keep it protected. Legolas, almost level 6. Aragorn, level 5. They are very strong heroes. And what a game, boys. There comes the Cloudpree. You can not move anymore. He's gonna... I mean, level 3 units are immune, by the way, to fear. But they will get still slowed down. 
And at this point, Isengard is just losing too much money. Because each Walk Rider, without any uh, slaughterhouse, is going to cost you 700 or 552. Because he has still some slaughterhouses. He has like three, that's why. And also upgrading them is very expensive. Uh, Saruman is going to be revived for 2800. Lourdes is going to be revived for 1300. That's 4100 he needs to invest. That's why he is so poor and he's basically broke. And Rohan has legit the chance to win this game. Because he's almost 2k in the bank, he will be very soon able to revive this castle. In this second, he can do that. He will have not only a castle, but he will have two outposts. He will have the majority of the map under his control with a very, very strong Rohirrim army. Level 10. You know, level 10. Legolas level 6. Theoden level, I don't know, like 6. He can also keep leveling up those units with the King's Favor over and over again. Okay. But Isengard needs is also time to get those heroes back in the business. Remember, the AOD and the Balrog got nerfed in this patch, so you cannot use it frequently anymore. So the cooldown is 7 minutes. Uh, I believe it was 8 minutes. Let me check. 8 minutes cooldown for AOD and Balrog. So you can still... Like, in the patch 1.06, the cooldown was like 5 minutes or something. It was just too short. And, you know, <laughs> you could summon it multiple times in a, in a game. And summoning it... Summoning something multiple times in a game which has basically no counterplay to it. Like, you can't really do much against AOD. You can't really do much against Balrog either. That kind of feels odd. So we increased the cooldown to 8 minutes. Which is still, you know, <laughs> not long enough. But we don't want to make it like 10 minutes. It would be just too long, you know? He never recruit or revive this Eoma. Eoma could be quite nice. He's going to go for the main castle. Saruman is almost back in the business, and summon is available, but what, uh, what Rohan should be doing is trying to summon the ends right on the spot. Because as we are talking, Isengard has not even an Uruk pet on the field anymore. He has no firepower to deal with the ends. Without fire damage, you cannot kill the ends that fast. Thank you so much for the follow, appreciate it. Means a lot. Okay. And Legolas should be able to protect this, he's almost level 7. The works, they don't have a chance. He, he's just trying to finish off the outpost. But Rohan can rebuild this, repair this. Balrog is almost back up, but so is AOD. The ends are going to war, but it looks like Saruman could make it out in the last possible second. I'm telling you guys, if Saruman could have not made it out, he's going to heal the end. And uh, there is Lourdes. And the Orphan is going to be destroyed, shattered into pieces. Aragorn is going to be sent solo? That's a big mistake. He's going to attack us for no reason. I think he misclicked. He wanted to use Blade Master. He was full HP and he used Atelas. Now he is on cooldown because he used it on the ends. And Aragorn is going to die for absolute no reason and will give 140 gold for um, for Isengard with the pillage from Lourdes. I mean, the map is still looking phenomenal for Rohan, right? But I think it was a huge mistake to lose Aragorn because it's a very valuable hero with double statue, three statues, and you get like from three 20% discount. It will still cost you 1520 to revive him. At this point, I think you can't, you shouldn't even try to revive him because you need to, at this point, just save money for the for the camp or for the castle, rather. Okay? I mean, what a game, dude. Guys, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this game. It's an incredible performance from the players. And Dunedain, we already know him. I know him, at least. He's a very good player. And also, his opponent is smurfing. Like, he's legit smurfing, by the way. Not even kidding. And, dude... By the way, I got beaten up twice in the tournament already. I lost against a player back and forth. Gondor against Rohan twice in a row. Uh, so there is so much fiesta going on in the tournament. You know, I don't know. We have Stevie, another BFME expert participating in this one. Guys, trust me. Once the group stage is over, once we reach to the final stage of the tournament, it's going to be awesome. And I want you guys to not miss those games. For that reason, make sure to follow the channel, Twitch channel. Subscribe to this channel, by the way, if you haven't already. And also... Tune in into live streams. In the following days, I will be streaming a lot, a lot, a lot in Twitch. And we will see between BFME 1 and Rise of the Witch King, we're going to be rotating. And by the way, back to the game. We have Balrog is almost, almost available. Again, Balrog is definitely capable of destroying, you know, a full castle. Not even speaking about a, about an outpost. And the question is, will he summon the Balrog on top of the enemy army? That's what I want to know. Maybe Balrog summon... Yeah! Oh, he's gonna kill only the elves. You see, the Rohirrim are just way too fast, way too quick. And they're gonna get in safety. They are running for their lives. Balrog is wasting a little bit of time here. The AOD doesn't deal too much damage to the buildings, but they still will be able to destroy the Orphan. However, without the help of the Rohirrim, they can't achieve too much. The Balrog has 
basically no cooldown on the wing, so he can keep flying over and over again. Maybe we're gonna nerf this one actually when I think about it. What do you guys think? Should we make wings have like a cooldown of 10 seconds so you can't fly over and over again? Beautiful fireball. The Balrog has still the time to ignite and breath fire to kill the full outpost. Theodin got crippled, but and he will definitely be. Oh, he's running into it! There is no way! He ran into it, my dude! Lourdes is drawing the sword, and Theodin King stands alone indeed! And Balrog, after accomplishing his mission, is saying goodbye to Middle Earth. So EOD was kind of blown away for no reason. He couldn't achieve too much. All he got to do with EOD was to kill the Orphan, which is literally not. does do nothing for you. You know, you want to kill the heroes like Lourdes and Saruman. At this point of the game, this is gonna this is what hurts Isengard a lot. But look at that. Would you look at that, boys? Rohan has recaptured the castle. What is this game? Man, it's kind of crazy. Boys, this is gonna be on our Hall of Fame. Uh, it's one of the better games, one of the best games I've actually casted. Especially in the patch 2.22, which is a, you know, it's a, it's like a new patch. It's like one year patch. And it's already a Hall of Fame worthy replay. World Championship makes it possible, boys. Or level 7 Legolas is gonna be scary. You gotta be careful against him because, look, he Palant used Palantir. Did he miss it? He missed it. Oh, if Palantir is faster, look him sprinting. Palantir gives you movement speed of 20%. And boom, it's gonna be enough to chase and catch Legolas. Legolas the knife fighter against Lourdes the sword man. I mean, Lourdes, you can't fight melee fight. He's gonna heal him, but Lourdes is just hitting like a truck. He's level 10, by the way. Very, very strong. He might even be he might be able to kill Lourdes though. No, he stole them with the warm tongue! And Lourdes is gonna be healed! There comes the ends. I mean, Rohan Isinger is instantly. Look, the focus and the, 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 the commitment. It's a long game and the players are still so focused, man. But beautiful, the ends are hard countering combos. And everybody who was complaining about ends, watch this, what just happened. You can summon ends on top of the enemy army and then you can insta trample them. And trust me on that one, regardless how much leadership the enemy army combos Crossbowman got, it does not matter. Because your ends, guess what, are hitting like a truck. They basically one-shot everything. They will be sent now forward. They can, I mean, basically they can tank arrows also for ages. They are almost immune to the arrow damage. The only actual weakness of them is fire arrows. It's their main and pretty much their only weakness. Uh, Elven Allies Special Summon. In the late late game, when you play against Gondor or Rohan, uh, the summons are going to be extremely annoying to deal with for the evil faction. Beautiful! But the heroes from Isengard are annoying to be dealt with too. Don't lose the level 6. He's gonna get in safety. Oh no, he's not. He's gonna get crippled and taken down. The Isengard player is still focused, makes almost no mistakes, and keeps playing a phenomenal game with the heroes of Isengard. I mean, Isengard has two heroes, but guess what? Quality beats quantity. And he has been doing a phenomenal job with Lourdes and Saruman. Level 10, level 10. We have reached a game in which the enemy lost the castle, the outpost. AOD twice, Balrog twice, Army, Vorks, Combos, Uruks, Pikemen, Rohirrim, Rohirrim Archer, Legolas, Aragorn, everything beside Gimli. And even though Gimli is super underrated, trust me, when Gimli is level 5, boys, this dude has to cripple Gimli. If you cripple anyone else beside Gimli, he will run you down. The Slayer from Gimli will give you the chance to hunt Saruman down. You can two-shot him, you know, with Gimli level 5. And you can also two-shot this Lourdes. So Isengard is rotating to the outpost top right side, which has no protection. It will be definitely taken down. With Devastation, Industry Combination, which will eventually give Isengard uh, over and over again great amount of resources. The outpost will be given up by Rohan. He knows he cannot protect it, but he has recaptured the camp and castle. I mean, I think that's something Isengard doesn't know about. Okay, Theoden is back in the business. And I, I think one of the mistakes Rohan played did was to not revive his Irma. Irma was very close to be level 4. Very important power spike, 70% more damage for the nearby Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archer, which basically makes your Rohirrim Archer one-shot heroes like Lourdes and, Theod uh, Lourdes and Saruman in a few seconds. There comes the Arrowwind, hitting like a truck against Pikeman too. I mean, if you can land Arrowwind on isolated targets like Saruman and Lourdes, they, can, they will get one-shotted too. Like... Even Lourdes or Saruman or Gandalf even. Gandalf will get through that one-shotted. You can even heal Gandalf with one change. 
the isolated arrow wind is the highest amount of DPS against units and heroes. Not against buildings, though. I mean, overall, lightning sword is better. But arrow wind, when you isolate a target like Witch King, you can also 100 to 0 Witch King, 100 to 0 Nazgul, 100 to 0 Aragorn. Very, very strong. Um, but, you know, you can take a look into the minimap, right? Because Isengard was able to reclaim the map control, which is very good for Isengard and super bad for Rohan. And Rohan is kind of broke. He doesn't have the chance to revive his Aragorn anytime soon for 1900. He's level 5. It will take you 2 minutes to get him back in the business. But I think it's not about the time. It's about the money. You have to get map control. Because every single second that's passing through will be in favor of Isengard. Yes, the Balrog. And after destroying this camp or the outpost, all he needs to do is destroy your castle. And Balrog is able to do that. You can summon Balrog here and breath fire the gate. Or, you know, alter the gate, break the gate and just go inside. You don't have to use Balrog to kill the buildings inside. But you can just break the gate with them. That is Lourdes. Um, I mean, Legolas is on the hand. This gives you only armor, by the way. Um, and makes you more tanky, but it doesn't give you movement speed. So I don't know the reason why he's using that and trying to run away. <laughs> he doesn't need to do that. Uh, Arrowwind is available. Balrog is available. EOD is available. And I think what Isengard can do is summon Balrog right on the spot. Legolas is going to get in safety, by the way. No problem. The problem is um, he lost all the level 10 Rohirrim Archer. That's a big problem, by the way. That's very really unfortunate. You cannot revive them. You can always replace your heroes, uh, but, you know, you cannot replace your high-level units. That requires a lot of time. I mean, Isengard has both the outposts under his control. He has, like, almost 100% of the map under his control. He has Balrog available. And I think he wants to make sure that Rohan won't be able to use EOD to counter Balrog. Oh, beautiful food. Nice timing. He insta stopped to use Glorious Charge. And the Rohiri will be barely able to survive. The trample incoming. The pikemen in the front again immune to be trampled. But not the archers behind. They are definitely getting killed. The Balrog is going to use the wings to fly. And Legolas is going to face his master. That's the big boy, Legolas. You, swords and bows, are no more useful, as Gandalf would like to say. Flee and fly, you fools. You should have listened to Gandalf, Legolas. And he's gonna get in front of the gate. Breath fire. Without ignite, you can't one-shot. You need to ignite. And he's now gonna be able to destroy the gate too. A double uh, outpost. I mean, Rohan will be able to get this outpost under his control eventually with the ends. And he has also EOD available from the spellbook. Will he use it to defend this? That's the big question. Oh, there comes the break, breaking gate. The fireball from Saruman has been breaking two gates in this game so far. Big commitment. He should be using EOD. Uh, he's going to use EOD here to defend this area, which is kind of very random. I think you should have defended this one. You don't want to lose your castle. Here you had the chance to kill Saruman too, right? It would be a much, much better choice, in my opinion. Because if you lose this castle, which definitely is going to go down now, then it's pretty much GG. Because, you know, you, sh you, you know, guys, quick question. What what, what do you want to prefer to protect more? Your outpost or your castle, you know? And Rohan is poor. We can, you know, say that he has not even 500 in the bank. He has, that's because he, has, he lost map control, right? He lost map control a lot. And yeah, he's doomed. But what a game, dude. What a game. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth game, boys. I was not able to cast this live on my channel because they've played this off stream. But mo most of the time, I'm casting those games live as they're happening. And again, if you want to not miss those games in the following days, weeks, it's going to take eventually a full month until we finish fully the tournament. And we have very strong people. I got bashed. I got 2 0 by a player in a Gondor Rohan matchup. So, you know, it's going to be quite fun. The castle has been destroyed. Rohan is once again returning to the position of one single camp. But we have seen that he's capable of defending himself with one single outpost. But the problem again is when he was defending, he had like very highly leveled, you know, units. He had like a very highly leveled Legolas, Aragorn. None of them are on the field anymore. He's going to use the uh, Cloudbreak to stun them. Again, level 1, level 2 units are getting stunned. There comes the Glorious Charge. This is on cooldown. He's going to fireball, land, trample, insta covered by Isengard. There comes the heal, and that's a desperate moment. Desperate attempt from Rohan to turn this game around, but it won't matter that much. As everything is falling da down and, you know, breaking down, the Citadel is going to be the last building remaining. You can also demolish that one if you want, and he will exactly do that one. That's going to be GG well played. 
and hopefully you guys enjoyed this game if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe for more videos like this in the future i will see you next time until then take care of yourselves keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys